Welcome back to another video. We're out here right by Staten Island Airfield, and today I wanted to talk about a new piece of kit added to my gear, and that is the Radio Master Boxer, the media slash influencer darling of the last two months. Every single person who's put their paws on this radio has fawned over it, gushed over it as the next coming of I don't know, G Radio Jesus. <laughs> With all that hype, I was obviously curious to give it a whirl, and I was really looking for a radio to put permanently inside of my main FPV kit. That way I have the Radio Master Zorro in that winter kit, that it resides there, it's always there, ready to go. And then I have a different radio that is in my main backpack with my five inch quads and all the rest of that stuff. So when I wanna go out and fly big drones, ready to go. When I wanna go out and fly baby drones, ready to go. That was really the whole goal of giving the Boxer a try. I wanted to add something to my FPV kit to make it a little simpler so I could just grab the bag I wanted to fly and go out the door. I really wanted to give my thoughts kind of quickly on this one because there isn't a whole lot new and different. If you're used to Radio Master radios, the majority of this radio is nothing new, not really a surprise. The plastics and the build quality are both very, very, very good, uh, bordering on excellent. The only way that could have been better is if it was like full carbon fiber chassis and crazy, but that would have made the radio crazy expensive. And like the other Radio Master radios, their cost, because they don't go crazy with fancy materials, is right in line. So you're getting a great value and a great product overall. And that's something that's consistent once again with the Radio Master Boxer. Really what I wanna talk about in this review is what's different from the Zorro, the TX16S, and what makes this Boxer so special and something that is quickly becoming my favorite radio that I've ever flown. Uh, and I don't say that lightly because I really, really enjoy that Zorro. And I have a huge fondness for the DJI uh, FPV controller, that big uh, honking chunky black one that looks like the old uh, Phantom 4 remote. One of the biggest positives for this radio is its size. That form factor is basically spot on. I think TBS hit it out of the park with the Mambo, which again, Mambo was not the first one to have this form factor and size. Even though this radio looks very similar to the Mambo, it is not a copy. I've held both radios. They are very different, but in their form factor, shape, and size, they are very similar for good reason. They basically pack a full-size gimbal, which I think is one of the biggest pros of this radio, into a form factor that's fairly easy to carry around, hold, whether you're using a lanyard or not, and it also packs up really nicely into basically whatever bag you've got. Beyond the physical size and build quality of this radio, one of the other big pluses are those full-size gimbals. While for micros, for me, it didn't make a huge difference, and I got by with the Zorro smaller radio when flying my five-inch quads, that lack of resolution sometimes could be an issue. Uh, say when I was lining up a precision gap, or I just wanted to add a little bit of extra uh, angle to a certain dive or needed to change direction just a little bit, that lack of resolution in the Zorro really presented as a problem, not infrequently. Uh, it's why I honestly saw the boxer and was instantly captivated. When doing dives, when doing tight maneuvers, the resolution of those larger gimbals and larger sticks really, really shows up. And it's really what makes that radio so special to me and why I love flying with that radio. In the same vein of being full-size gimbals, that means that they are compatible with the AGO-1s. Mine is rocking those blue all-metal CNC AGO-1 gimbals. And oh boy, they feel buttery smooth. I actually did for the first week that I flew that radio, I flew with the original Hall sensor gimbals. I can report truly with complete sincerity, those gimbals are awesome. They are great, they feel great, feel sturdy. There's not a ton of flex in them. If you really push on them, you can flex them. But again, they're really, really great gimbals out of the gate. There's really no need to replace them with the AGO ones, unless either A, you just want that extra jewelry or bling on your radio, or when you eventually do break or wear out or what have you, those gimbals that are in the radio stock, you've got a fantastic replacement. Another big pro is the fact that you can change out those gimbals without taking the radio apart, really. Uh, there's basically four screws on the back. You just peel up the little plastic hand grips and the radio comes just off on the back. So you don't have to take out any boards. You don't have to unplug any cables. Compared to swapping out the AGO-1s in the Radio Master Zorro, this was a cinch. 
honestly, I've never had uh, any experience customizing a radio that was as easy or straightforward as this. So I will happily say, if you want to change out those AG01 gimbals, as long as you're comfortable using a screwdriver and plugging and unplugging your standard like JST, uh, JST protector, <laughs> JST connector, you're pretty much good to go. Um, it's super easy. It took me all of like six to eight minutes, calibrated my switches and my pots. <laughs> and uh, yeah, honestly, I can't say enough good things about how that upgrade worked. Another pro in particular for the Radio Master Boxer is the included accessories. They not only include the radio, they include a custom kitted case, and they also include a really, really nice uh, kind of rubbery plastic gimbal protector uh, and switch protector, which is great for putting your radio away, storing it. The case is great, fits right to the radio. You can leave on a Crossfire module and the factory antenna and it fits perfect. Same goes with Tracer, same goes with an ELRS module like the uh, Ranger. It fits the antenna on with the module on. The battery life on this radio is amazing. Coming from the Zorro, that is doubly true. This radio lasts for hours, if not full days. I don't have to worry about charging. I don't get low battery warnings. I cannot say enough about the battery life of the Radio Master Boxer, especially coming from the Radio Master Zorro. The last big benefit for the Radio Master Boxer is that the ELRS edition comes with a full one watt transmitter in it. Zorro, only 250. The TX16S, I don't think it's 250, it may be 500, but Right here is the actual wattage of the TX, TX16S, but it's not that full thousand, uh, thousand milliwatts or one watt. <laughs> the Boxer comes with that one watt module, has all the latest tech and fanciness that you find in modern ELRS systems. So as far as the ELRS internal receiver module goes, cheers Radio Master, you made a banger. In addition to the higher output power, it supports all the different packet rates, modes, and also it has a standard like T-style uh, antenna on top that is removable. When you're packing it away, you don't have to worry about knocking that, that antenna off, and it is a pretty standard connector, so you can put a different antenna on as you prefer. Internally in the radio, it's also, I think, a standard UFL. So if you want to do like an internal antenna mod, something like that, you have the option. While this radio is fantastic, it is not perfect. And let's start out with my biggest issue with the radio, the antenna. <laughs> While I love the range and power and performance that an external antenna provides, the little screw on antenna that they include with it is a little annoying. The collar that you screwed the antenna on with is set down in the radio itself, so tightening it into the correct position can be a little frustrating. This radio may be a little annoying to you if you prefer to travel with the antenna attached because you have to choose. Either your radio is ready to go as you prefer and you risk damaging or tearing off that antenna from the top of the radio. It does feel sturdy, but again, added risk. Or you have the option where you unscrew the antenna every time, adding a little bit of extra hassle to starting or finishing a flying session. Is it a big deal? Not really, but again, it's something to consider. Next, this is something that's true with all Radio Master radios, but in particular, the little scroll wheel that's next to the screen, there's a little play in it. It's the case with all of them. It's the way that mechanism has to work, but you can kind of tap on it and makes a little like, you, you feel that it moves a little bit without kind of being engaged or without feeling tight. So it's the only place that I really feel that it's not a premium feeling radio. This is the nitpicky of the nitpickiest complaint I have. But again, it's something that I noticed and worth pointing out. And last but not least, I do wish the screen on the bottom was a little bigger and I do wish it was color. I don't know that I care if it was a touch screen or not, but it's something that I just wish. It'd make it look a little bit cooler, a little more premium, a little nicer. Does it actually make a difference or change the performance of the radio? No. That black and white screen works perfectly and most of the time I can't even see it because I've got goggles on. So take that one as you will. Not a big deal, but it's still something that I've considered while flying that radio. That's the Radio Master Boxer. That's my feelings on it. If you're looking for a new radio or you're looking for your first radio, I think this is a fantastic way to go. 
works with the sim, has full-size gimbals, is upgradable, will work with any kind of module you can find. It is a fantastic little package and it's not crazy expensive either because for basically 140, 150 bucks, you get probably one of the best size radios for FPV. If you fly traditional fixed wings, this radio still sh sh blah, 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 should still work, but it may not quite fit your, uh, it may not quite fit your use case because you may want more switches, more versatility, more functionality that may be provided from something like the TX16S. Um, but again, that's really gonna be down to personal preference and what you do, what you fly, all of that. But for FPV, I think this radio is fantastic and Radio Master, you killed it. Uh, if I could, if I felt like cursing and bleeping it on this channel, there would be a big F word before that. You did fantastic. Not that F word. That's now part of my permanent kit. I am going to do a gear update video probably next week. Uh, we will see when this video comes out. But overall, I just want to give you my thoughts and my initial feelings on the Radio Master Boxer. If I find anything else that I like, don't like, whatever it has going on with it, I will keep you updated. But so far, Radio Master Boxer fantastic and I give it a super super high recommendation as always down in the description below links to the radio master boxer the AGO one gimbals the additional big boy battery if you want to basically have it last for days and all my normal gear that I use to make these videos. Those are Amazon affiliate links. If you use them, it doesn't cost you anything, but it does help support this channel so I can review more stuff, do more things, travel more places. I really, really appreciate all your support. As always, leave in the comments, have you flown the Radio Master Boxer? Are you considering the Radio Master Boxer? Let me know, I wanna know your thoughts. And as always, if you like the video, please subscribe, like the video. It helps me in this algorithm stuff and I will see you in the next video. Peace, bye. So that was the pros, that was the cons of this radio. Overall, I think it is a super compelling package. If you have not, I'm gonna let this ambulance pass. Please hold while we, before we resume service momentarily. There we go, okay.